All right, so here, here, here. Let's address the whole Ethiopia is not Ethiopia nonsense. Again, let's address the whole Ethiopia is not Ethiopia nonsense. Someone make you believe that Ethiopia is not really Ethiopia. Okay? And they say, well, it's because in the King James Version of the Bible, when we read Ethiopia and then we compare it with a Hebrew that it's allegedly translated from, it acts as Cush. And then in a Blue Letter Bible reference, it says, actually, it's not Cush, Cush, it's Kish in Mesopotamia, or what they call the Aram Naharaim. In the Hebrew, it's Aram Naharaim. What's Aram Naharaim? The Aram Naharaim is the Aram, Aram, of the two rivers. Now, later on, they will call it as like Syria, Syria, so forth and so on. That's going on to the Iraq, Iran, the ancient Babylonian region. But often the academics refer to it as the Mesopotamia. And in World War II, they call it the Mespot, Mespot for short, you know, Mespot for Mesopotamia, you know, but this is a messy issue trying to say that Ethiopia is not Ethiopia. <laughs> Key, 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 key. So, so what is Ethiopia? It says Kush, but actually the Kush, they'll say, is not Ethiopia. Wait, hold on for a moment. They say that Ethiopia is not Ethiopia, but actually in the King James Version of the Bible, the, the underwriting, or at least the Hebrew that it was translated from, actually says Kush. And then they say in some reference, some Blue of the Bible reference, it's actually not really Kush, Kush, but it's Kish, kish. Okay. Let's go there right here, 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 here. Okay, let's just hold that right there. And then let's just go to this right here. We'll have some slides to share briefly right here. So here, Genesis 2.13. Here's the verse that they refer to. Ones like Garfield Reed and many others, you know, they're on this whole anti-Ethiopia, um, anti hylas Selassie, and anti-Rastafari or Rastafarian or Rastafarianism or some ism, schism, we not know. But anyway, they're basically against Ethiopia, right? Hylas Selassie. And Rastafari, speaking about we as Rastafari, which they call us, they call us, they call us Rastafarian, and they call what they say we, quote, believe, so to speak, Rastafarianism. And they believe everything that they read on Wikipedia. Now, Wikipedia has some very interesting and good information. Don't dismiss it. We're not dismissing it, but you have to go a little deeper. You got to have a little linguistic science as well, because these guys or whoever translated these things into English, they had to be looking at other languages, other references, other resources. So when you then come to conclusion like Ethiopia is not Ethiopia, you know, and this whole thing about Ethiopia, they somehow want to change time, change history, change the reality that brings us today to recognize, at least in this time of the Gentiles, the nation states, the so-called nation states in this particular region of the world that is referred to as Ethiopia. And they will say, well, that Ethiopia is not the Ethiopia the Bible was talking about. Hmm. Oh, really now? Okay, so here we're in Genesis, in the Hebrew, Bereshith, but Genesis chapter 2, verse 13, and the name of the second river is Gihon. The same is it that compasseth the whole land of Ethiopia. Now, another thing I noticed that Garfield was doing, right? And we actually took a couple of screenshots and like to go through for the Chabarim, at least, you know, the fellow Talmudim, go through this right here because I give thanks to all the brothers and sisters were there on the chat and they were, you know, you know, at the left and at the right, you know, we was trying to keep a balance, a centrist view, but they were at the left and at the right. And yeah, they were going hard. They were going, they were saying all sort of things, you know, some interesting things and observations we made as well. Give thanks brothers and sisters and Chabarim. We came on in the last five or six minutes and Garfield had to go. We heard that he did a whole four hour rant and everything on, you know, again, anti-Ethiopia, anti Hala Selassie and anti-Rastafari, Rastafarian. And he says he's not against, he's not anti. He has nothing against them, but yet he's investing a lot in this. You know why? Because they exhausted themselves 
right, on other pseudo-intellectual nonsense, you know, just exhausted, waste of the people on things. I don't know if people even understood anything. People are just more lost than they were before. You know, like what the Bible says, it says, forever learning, but never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. But here, let's just touch on this right here. So they say Ethiopia is not Ethiopia. It's actually Kush. I also want to heal up, heal up to Ankoma Jed. Ankoma Jed, that sometimes, you know, we refer to the brother as Ankoma Dread. We need to have a reasonment soon, soon, soon. The brother was there and he was seeking to represent, seeking to present certain facts. In our humble opinion, Garfield was cutting him off, you know, knocking him off. I think they blocked him, so forth and so on. He came back on when we had said a couple of words and he wanted to say something and Garfield just dismissed him and then want to talk about other people being emotional. You know, are you being so emotional? Well, he's the biggest emotional one because he got something, you know, against Ethiopia, right? Against Haile Selassie, against Rastafari. Then he has the audacity to say, well, I don't have nothing against Ethiopia. I'm not against Ethiopia. So, so what are you? You're just a intellectual, um, intellectual, academic. You're trying to be academic. You're trying to be scholarly. Well, well, let's touch on this right here. If you're going to be scholarly, you're going to have to be in the linguistics. Mm -hmm. Because linguistics is a large part of the science here. If these things were never translated into English, then I guess we would not have no discussion right here in English. We have to have it in Hebrew, you know, or in Amharic, or in... Ethiopic or good is, and he dismisses. Here's the interesting thing: you dismiss the people, the so-called Ethiopian people themselves, and their own testimony, and never really go to what the Ethiopian people themselves say, right? While we know this is one of the oldest um, contiguous uh, cultural groups of people, there's many other people, different tribes, ethnicity. I don't want to use the T word because that's a sensitive word, but different eth ethnicities ethnic groups. In pre-modern um, times, these were referred to as different nations that came under this banner that we refer to as Ethiopia. You see, the West, the Gentiles are doing a lot to destroy a very important ancient black people's paradigm. This is what they're seeking to destroy because this was the only one. Remember, Ethiopia was not colonized. And then they say, well, it was not colonized, you know, um, you know, by like by Europeans and in, in the way other African, but it was colonized by Christianity. You no, know, the colonization really by this latter day thing is something that has happened fairly recent, like over the past 40 or so years, right? The past 40 or so years. So, what we will defend concerning the true Ethiopia, right, or the true roots of Ethiopia are going to be pointing pre right 1974 and 75 check but let's look at this right here once again they say ethiopia is not ethiopia and what they do as well we notice is that they'll go to different other versions now of course we have like the bbe you see the bbe here and the name of the second river is gihon this river goes round all the land of course so they were saying well can you show us the four rivers can you show us the four rivers in africa but then they say, well, Ethiopia, Garfield, he said Ethiopia is not in the Bible. See, I guess he was focusing on his point here in Genesis chapter 2, verse 13, since the underwriting, since the original text that the King James Version alleges it was translated from is the Hebrew. And in the Hebrew, it is Cush. Therefore, in many of the places in the Old Testament where we see Ethiopia, if we was reading the Hebrew, we'll have Cush and Cushim. Are you not as the Bene Kushim unto me, O Bene Yisrael? That's the Hebrew. The English says, Are you not as the children of the Ethiopians unto me, O children of Israel? So he was going on on that point. Right? And then in the chat, we had to say, You lie. Because Ethiopia is in the Bible, right? Even in the original texts that were used to translate into English, especially in the New Testament. And then he says, well, is that the Ethiopia, Ethiopia of today? You mean Ethiopia since like the Berlin Conference and dividing up of Africa and the artificial borders and so forth and so on? No, no, it's not. And in fact, Africa, right? Even the term Africa is not in the Bible. How about that? 
right? Africa is a lot of day terminology over the past four to, you know, being applied to the whole continent is roughly four to maybe six, five to six hundred years, five to six hundred years from our own research. So even Africa is not in the Bible. But we use the term Africa, right? We speak about we Africans, right? We talk about doing our DNA and getting our uh, genealogy and this and that. And when it says we have descendancy or relation to Africa, because this is what we talk today. This is how we refer to today. And this is the same way we refer to Ethiopia today. But after all, he says... He says that, well, he has nothing against Ethiopia, but yet he is against Ethiopia, right? He's against Ethiopia in his pseudo, right, his pseudo-intellectual bias, right, against the Ethiopian testimony and another perspective to these same historical facts that he is alluding to. So right here, we look at the BBE. It says, in the name of the second river is Gihon. This river goes round all the land of Cush. So they were saying, well, round. Can you show us a river that goes around the land of Cush? Mm. Let's take a pause right here and let's go to our pictures. Let's go to some pictures here and let's see if we can show anything to that effect. Let's see if we can show anything to that effect. Okay, so here we got a couple of um, rivers. Right, a couple of maps for a couple of rivers right here. Let's see if we had downloaded this particular one, right, where it shows the rivers, the rivers. Okay, you can see we have a few things right here for the immediate um, share. Well, we start with this right here, right? We start with this right here, okay? This right here, this is a kind of a proposing how it was in ancient times that Moshe, Moses, is evidently pointing to. So in Genesis chapter 2, we know that Moshe, Moses, who is the reputed author of the first book of the Torah, the first book of the Bible, known as Bereshit or Genesis, we kind of should be pretty certain and know <clears throat> that he wasn't there at the time. So he must have got that information, you know, from... Whether, as the Bible says, he was learning all the wisdom of Mitzrayim, of the two Mitzahs, right, of the Tawi, more correctly, you know, ancient Egypt was referred to as the Tawi, right, and Kemet is a later euphemism used for the land. In fact, when people talk about Kemet, it really wasn't called Kemet until it became popular, like after the 11th, 12th, around that dynasty, and then it became more popular. It was like the term of the people, because did you know that so-called Kemet comes from Kush? That the Kemet, what we call the Kemet of ancient Egypt, it actually comes from Kush, Ethiopia, because that's the topsoil, the rich, you know, topsoil, the, you know, the soil, the silt, the soil that comes down that black, rich, you know, earth that the ancient Egyptians waited for and in a sense maybe even worship, regarded highly because that was their life. But here we have one map here that says Kush. This is one place that's proposed based on some archaeology and other facts of the people that the ancient Egyptians refer to as the Kush or the Kasht the cash. In fact, some of it is translated often as the vile Kush, the vile Kush. This is one proposed translation of it. Speaking about the region of the Tanesi, Tanesi people, the people of the bow, that's also referred to as the Nubian, the Nubian people. So this is what you see the red, the red circle right there around what is approximately located Right. And referred to by the academics, by some scholarship, by some other artifacts and everything else as the proposed region. Right. The proposed region. Remember, none of this is super factually known. Right. It is. It's not. It's been proposed. See, why I say it's not factually known, people say, why do you say that? If we go back to old maps. Right. This is still being explored, still being researched. So there is new information that's coming out that is challenging certain um, preconceptions, certain notions. Right. But it's not saying because it's a challenge, just because someone challenges and say, well, look, there's 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 some rivers over in Mesopotamia. Well, that's where the Garden of Eden. See, the whole question about with the Garden of Eden, right? the Garden of Eden. Do we think that the Garden of Eden was in Africa? what is called Africa, if you're talking about with the borders of what's called Africa today, no, we, we think that it was more in the region of Arabia, 
right? More in the relative region of Arabia, between those two rivers over in Mesopotamia, the Tigris and Euphrates, right? And the rivers that we have in East Africa, right? This is where the Garden of Eden, in fact, the Gulf, right, in the Horn of Africa. Let's return to this for a moment and let's see if we can get to the Gulf in the Horn of Africa. Let me show you. You see right here when it says the Bab el Mandab, right? That re region right there with the arrows pointing to on other maps, you know, modern maps and today's maps is known as the Aden, the Aden. Let me see if we can bring this out right here clearly on any of these maps right here, right? Um, the Aden. And then you can see it down here, but it's not too clear. You see what says Aden, right? At the tip of... Um, you know, it's not that clear. It says Bob Alman Bob, but this is not a clear one. We're going to see if we can find a clearer, right, a clearer um, map or picture. This this is a little bit clear, but it's somewhat blurry. But the Gulf of Eden is right there at the tip of, at the tip of, let's see over here. You can see this a little bit. Okay, you can see the Aden. You see what says Aden? You see what says A-D-E-N? That etymologically is one and the same, right? It being an Afro-Shemitic term, an African Shemitic term, like Hebrews, African Shemitic, Arabic is even African Shemitic. You know what I'm saying? Amharic that they speak today as a national official language is African Shemitic. You see what I'm saying? These are African or Afro-Shemitic languages, which tells you already that there's black people involved. Right? There's so-called, quote, African people involved, even by virtue of the languages being known as Afro-Shemitic languages. And also black people have been speaking this particular, these particular languages all in that region. And they have their roots in these parts of what's called Africa, right, for thousands of years. And their language and linguistics have remained pretty much consistent and they are academically identified as Afro-Shemitic languages or African Shemitic languages. See, when we're talking about scholarship, these are the areas that we really need to look at scholarship. So you see where it says right here, Aden, right? The Aden, that in the languages, the Aden, 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 and Aden. Like we say, the Garden of Aden. We say Eden, that's the English way of saying it, but it's Aden, Aden, right? And what's interesting is that it could be Aden, but it's not adding. So they even use certain letters, like throughout the different Shemitic languages, they have hard letters and soft letters. See, this is what real scholars do when we're seeking to make a comparison of whether this is that, right? It's getting into the linguistics of it. So many of these people are regurgitating what other scholars have, have said or what they have proposed or what they have alleged or what they have, you know, believed or whatever, but they have not really done their own research because they cannot really do their own research. All they can do is regurgitate what other scholars have done. And here's the big thing is the critical thinking, right? We need to have some critical thinking about these things of where, what was where, and why, what was where, and when, what was where. Let me see if these maps here, you can see this right here, which shows the link. This here shows the link even in ancient times, between these two um, river valley civilizations. That's what we have. We have two river valley civilizations. We have one in the east of Africa, right, East Africa, and we have one in, you see what it says, Uruk, right, Uruk, or in the, the, the general Mesopotamia, or as the Hebrew refers to this, instead of Mesopotamia, we say the Aram, 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 Naharaim. Naharaim means rivers, right? In the sense of two rivers. They tried to, you know, on Garfield's show, um, brought in another brother that they was looking at some research where they're trying to say that the four rivers are actually over there. We've seen other scholarship that proposed that the four rivers are over there. But here's what's so very interesting. We're not talking about little streams. We're talking about rivers. See, in the Hebrew, we have different words for different kinds of water, right? There are different words. Believe it or not, for ancient, you know, language and linguistics, the Hebrew is, can be, can be quite specific when referring to certain things because even in ancient times, they were seeking to avoid confusion. 
right, as best as possible. A lot of the confusion comes through is because people are battling their favorite translation because the translation agrees with their own ignorance, right? They're not able to go into the original script and really to see and discern for themselves and fish for themselves what it's really saying, right? And applying it to their particular argument. So Ethiopia is not Ethiopia, really? See, the Kush region, you see where the Kush region is? You see the proximate area where the Kush region is? And you see that line, right, of travel. People get into boats and they sail into boats and they do trade and commerce, right? And they travel back and forth. Like I try to make mention that this map here is a good map because this is before there were artificial borders. See, artificial borders, right? Even in ancient times, right, rarely do we have over detail on borders. We know like generally it'd be like to a particular natural, you know, some natural, like say if there's a river, they might stop at the river, you know, different tribes or peoples, you know, what their land mass was. It wasn't like today, right, where they have, you know, some artificial borders on a map that cuts through natural geographical, you know, boundaries. There was natural geographical boundaries. You remember the Bible says about removing landmarks. A lot of the ancient landmarks have been removed, right? And so therefore what goes on is a lot of speculation on who's who, right? Now this is on the Tobia, Tobia, getting into the archaic name of Ethiopia, which is Tobia. Right. We first had proposed that, you know, more than almost 20 plus years ago, that Tobia, because some people say, well, that just comes from the Greek. And we say, no, that the Greeks, right, they heard what the Ethiopians or the Tobians called themselves and they rearticulated that. And actually, Tobia has a very Hebraic, right, has a very Hebraic origin, which is another proof positive of what the claims of many of the Ethiopians, this Judeo, Christian, Solomon, the Queen of Sheba, a lot of ones like to pretend that these things are not true, that people have just been believing like a lie for a long time, right? However, the historical facts and evidence, much of which has been suppressed, but now because of social media, we have more access to information, right? And a lot of information is disturbing certain preconceived notions but one thing should be clear that ethiopia is ethiopia right in more ancient times tobia what you see on the screen right here is tobia tobia ethiopia ethiopia tobia ethiopia you know it's like right now they do this a lot in english in other languages there are words that are brought in to English as loan words. So the term Ethiopia or from Tobia was brought into ancient archaic Koine Greek as a loan word. And in that loan word, the Greeks sought to articulate or explain their own meaning by that particular derivation of the loan word from Tobia to Ethiopia. And here's the amazing thing. When I was declaring this before, people were thinking like, well, yeah, you know a little bit of language and all of this and that, but, but you're wrong with that. Until certain Ethiopian scholarship, right, that already have made those connections. So we're not, we're not the only one who made this connection. We did not know that the Ethiopians had made this connection. Some of the scholarship already was making this connection from their own research. After all, they're on the ground. They, they are more familiar with the language and the artifacts and the writings and there's other things that have not been revealed or disseminated right in the West. That's not known to the West. In fact, there was a, um, there was a, uh, a video about 10 to maybe 15 or so years ago where the Ethiopians had brought out some older manuscripts and some of the scholars and academics and institutions that got to review some of it, they were shocked because they're saying, wait, these documents are older right, than what they assumed the Ethiopians still had, which shows that the Ethiopians had older documents that they did not um, reveal 
or and definitely the West did not get their hands on it because a lot of the documents that Ethi you know Ethiopian documents, many of them were stolen or or as they like to use the term appropriated in the West, like the the Book of Enoch, the Book of Jubilees, other kind of apocryphal books, you know, from the time of Sir James Bruce and others who was on a mission to discover the source or the headwaters, the source of the now. And notice after they discover these things going further and further into the south, right, the south of the continent called Africa, you know, what happened? Then they took over that, you know, that river, that lake, you know, and then they called it, uh, then Queen Victoria, Victoria Falls, the falls. You remember the falls? You know, they, they named it Victoria Falls and changed it from its own indigenous nomenclature. You know what I mean? So that shows even the Europeans knew Right, based on their familiarity with the Bible, that the Ethiopia that's mentioned in the Bible is, right, is Ethiopia. Let's go over here. So the rivers that circulate that go around. Okay, we're going to get back to that right there. This is a BBE, right? I forget what the BBE stands for, um, you know, the abbreviation of it. But this is one translation. You got Easy English. Easy English says the name of the second river is Gihon. It goes through the whole land of Cush. So what you have is a lot of pseudo scholars out there, right? And in this respect, right, in this regard, I have to regard, right, Garfield or disregard, like, like his pseudo scholarship. But still, I try to understand what I can understand because he might have certain points. There might be certain points that get left on the table that needs to be said. This is a correct point, but your interpretation and your miscontextualization, right, is incorrect. Obviously, you have a bone to pick as ones who say, right, for whatever reason. We're not going to assume like some of the, you know, the trolls. I want to say the trolls, but the ones who were in the comments so forth and so on were saying, you know what I mean? Let them go. Let them roll, right? But let's keep this discussion going on. So here in the easy English, right, as he should have kept that discussion going on with Ancoma, right? But since he already had his preconceived notions to bring forward, right, Ancoma Jed was showing another my perspective of it that obviously was going against what Garfield Reed wanted to show, so he dropped him off of the show right there. You know what I mean? He was asking for a debate, and Garfield was, you know, he even Garfield tried to joke and jest, but he was running from that debate with our brother Ancoma, Ancoma Jed, right? But here, the easy English. I'm showing you these different versions because they will go to these different easier versions and try to find a version that agrees right with the misconceptions they already have in mind right so they say well which one would you want to choose you want to choose this one up here the bbe and the name of the second river is gihon this river goes round all the land of kush is that the correct translation or is it the easy english the name of the second river is gihon it goes through the whole land of kush which one is it is it that the river goes around because they try to make make a big point? Show us a river that goes around 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 Ethiopia, or show us a river that goes around Kush. Okay, I'm gonna show you a river that goes around Kush. All right, let's take it off of here and let's see if we can get back here. Here we go, right here. You see this river right here? You see what says Blue Now? Blue Now. You see what says Blue Now? You see what says Lake uh, Tana? They say Tana, but Lake Tana. Right? You see over here where it says White Now? Right, white now, right? You see where it says South Sudan, white now, right? And Juba, you see down here where it says Uganda, or as in the movie, they said it as Wakanda, Wakanda, Uganda. These are two ways when reading certain African and even Afro Shemitic, you know, glyphs that it can be said. Like one tribe might say Wakanda, Wakanda. Another tribe might say Uganda, Uganda, Uganda. It's like that W. You know how the W can have a U? It reminds me of, of the Tetragrammaton, the name of, you know, the Lord in Hebrew, so to speak. You know, where one say that is, is one might say Yahuwah, right? Some of us will say Yahuwah, Yahuwah. Some say, no, it's not Yahuwah, but it's a who, right? And then we'll argue about the W. Is the W a U sound, right? Is the W a West sound? The W can be both a U sound and it can be a W sound. So the place called Uganda can also be referred to as Wakanda. Why do you think they did that movie? Go watch that movie again when they were showing the place, 
I think they were showing the place in one of the frames in the movie. They had this thing on the screen, like, you know, like when they're like in some kind of a center and they have all these screens like of maps and places, you know, um, monitors and everything. And on one of the monitors, they actually, if you know the geography, and I recognize the geography, said that's East Africa right there, right? That's That's where the rivers are. Oh, wow, that's Uganda there, but they're calling it Wakanda. And being familiar with linguistics, you know, where a word can be said either either way, depends on the dialect, depends on the particular ethnicity, peoples, tribes, their mother tongue, and their particular enunciation. But my point here is notice we're going all the way down right here to Kenya, and you see where they have the lake? You see where the Lake Victoria? Right? But notice these other rivers, these other kind of lakes, and these other kind of rivers. Now, this is not a full map, right, going all the way down to the south. And big up, big up the Rastafari in the south, Rastafari in the South Africa. You know what I mean? Um, so here, 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 look at this river here. Now, notice that the now, or what's called the now, right, Nahar. See, Nahar, Nahar is Hebrew, and Nahar... Right, linguistically is related to the English Nal, Nal, Nahar, Nahar, Nal. Right? <clears throat> Check out the linguistics on that right there. Right? But the Nal, in the Hebrew we have the Nahal, right? Nahal, right? Na, you know, we have Nahar, Nahar, right? Because the R and the L, right? There's something called Rehotism, where some peoples, um, it's hard for them to enunciate the letter R, like a R. Ra, 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 right? And they say that la, la, la. So the L and the R interchanges. Even in ancient um, Kemet or ancient Tawi, ancient Egypt, those who have studied linguistics have come across a lot of scholarship and academic reasonings concerning certain glyphs that can be read both as an L and as an R. So Nahar, right? We're pointing to the Hebrew is at the root of the word Nal. Right, the Nal, Nahar, right, Nahar, Nahal, Nahal, Nal, Nal, now, now. And then we come down into, you know, this later day English that we're speaking. But notice that this river and the river that comes from deep in Africa, right, deep on the concept of Africa, right, it flows not like any other river on the face of this earth. Think about that for a moment. Mm. And you say that Ethiopia is not Ethiopia. We say nonsense. We say that's a lot of nonsense. Yes, people are learning. But it's like the scripts say, forever learning, but never able to come to the acknowledgement of the truth. Right? Because it's obviously the truth, right, disturbs them. Right? The truth makes them edgy and edgy. That they have to go out on these limbs that ones like Garfield and others are going out on. But... As an intellectual reasoning and exercise, it's interesting because those of us who say, well, we know some truth about this or we know the truth about it, it challenges us, right, to present those truths and also to verse these um, um, poorly, poorly, um, poorly articulated arguments, right, that Ethiopia is not Ethiopia, right? And he says, well, if a Zana... Right. If Azana had not, you know, used the exonym, you know, this name Ethiopia, if Haile Selassie had not said it's not the country is not Abyssinia, but actually it's Ethiopia, then nobody would be talking about Ethiopia today. So you see the movement, the Rastafari movement and other movements. There's many people who are pro Ethiopia, right, for different and sometimes related reasons. Right? And this disturbs ones like Garfield. It disturbs ones like him, obviously. You know, I see about Garfield Reed and, and all of that. Right? But here, 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 the river that encompasses. Notice how this river here, right, goes around. Right? You see how the river bends and turns around right there? This is something that would be observable to the people on the ground. Right? To the people on the ground. I mean, even over here, you can see the bending of the river. Right is a type of going around. Is the river going around like the like the red circle around Kush? No, right. It's not going around like that. But let's get back to the translation for a moment. 
right? Because he's at this translation. I want to take this one point right here that ones like Garfield said that Ethiopia is not Ethiopia. Nonsense. Ethiopia is Ethiopia. And in the Hebrew Bible, Ethiopia is referred to as Cush. But then they say now, well, Cush is not the Cush in Africa. It's actually the Cush in, in Mesopotamia, right? It's actually the Cush in like Iran, Iraq area, you know, in Mesopotamia. But that's Kish. See, in the ancient languages, you can have a Kush and you can have a Kish, right? And it's always not referring to one and the same, but there may be, and in this case, there is a relation. There is a relation, right? The Bible brings out that relation, but people seek to dismiss that relation. So which one is it? Is it that the river goes through the whole land? Or is it that the river goes around all the land of Cush, right? knows all the land of Cush. See, this is what happens people when you get in these other translations some of the translations you might be able to understand it better and say hey that seems to make more sense right based on how it's translated but the question is whether it's translated correctly whether it's translated faithfully or accurately let's say it like that because it, after all it's still a translation so what we have right here we have with shame ha nahar ha shani and the name of the second river, Gihon, 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 Wishem Hanahar Hasheni Gihon. Now that's the Afro African Shemitic enunciation. Martin, the modern Hebrew would have it as Vishem, Vishem Hanahar Hasheni Gihon. Similar, but you could tell there's a different. We say Wishem. They would say Vishem, Vishem, Vishem. We in the African Shemitic pointing would say, Wishem, Wishem, Ha Nahar, Ha Sheni, the second, Ha Sheni, the Sheni, Gihon, who, he, it. And the name of the second river, he, it, Ha Sobeib, Ha Sobeib, Ha Sobeib, modern Hebrew, Ha Sobeib. This is this word right here, just for once to look at it. It's a key word because Ha Sobeib. Right has the sense of to encircle or to go round, to go round something. We're gonna look at this. Let's look at this. Eight call eret kush. Eight uh, uh, a direct object marker in the Hebrew. Right. Um, he or he say who he ha so babe the one that circles. Right. Eight call all the aret all the land of Kush, right? All the land of Kush. So we just went through the Hebrew right there, right? Let's bring it down because we're still looking at translations. Now here's the ISV, right? We're going to at least address a few of these because I, I noticed that when ones and ones like Garfield and others were speaking about this, they were using different, you know, they were using different translation other than, you know, the conventional King James. There's nothing wrong with that, right? Some of the other translations sometimes do bring out a word or two that might be more accurate with our understanding of modern or Hebrew today, of the biblical Hebrew in these modern days. The ISV says the name of the second river is Gihon. So we know that that part generally is correct, right? It winds. So this one, ISV says it winds through the entire land of Cush. So the words entire, right? The words um, all, right? And the words whole, is basically these are i'm not gonna say cognates but they're almost like synonyms right synonyms of what we have here here we're going to go into the kjv the king james version with the strong's you know blue letter strong's word so here we have the blue letter strong's word so here what's the first thing we should look at we should first look at this word compasseth notice the kjv says the same it is that compasseth now we know that a compass basically goes around in a circle, right? Correct? A compass goes around in a circle. But when someone says something compasseth, right? Are they saying that goes around a full circle or that in some way it circles the entire land of Ethiopia, right? Sabab, right? Yes, Sabab, right? Sabab. Here the BDB, Brown's Drivers 
Briggs, BDB, stands for Browns Drivers Briggs definition says, this is the H5437. And here's the key word. Show me a river, right, that goes around the land of Ethiopia, right? Well, Martin, this is the Martin map right here. This is a portion of Ethiopia. I just showed you right there. That's the river that goes around. And if we look at where my Kush was, right, we can show you right there where we have a river that goes around that particular land. And here's how we know this. From ancient Tawi, called ancient Egypt, right, from the ancient Tawi, here's what's very interesting, that there was the eastern side and there was the western side. The Kemet, was called Kemet, was the eastern side, right? Because on the west side was the Darshat, the desert. It was the desert. Remember, the desert was on the western side. The desert, the red lands, the desert land, the sand lands, the red lands. But on the eastern side was the more fertile ground. And this is why in ancient Egypt, later on, they referred to this as the Kemet, Right, so you see when we look at this map right here, on the right-hand side is what we're saying is the east. On the right-hand side of the map was where the Kemet was. So as the land would come down, it would deposit, right? The majority of it would be deposited like on the right-hand side, right? Some, of course, you know, it's a river, but they would use that for the cultivation because in their own belief system, of the ancient Tawi, ancient Egypt, they believe that the west side right, was like the land of the dead and where the sun went down, you know, to the other world, so forth and so on, as it journeyed from the east to the west. So it was a very strong east <clears throat> and west orientation in the place called ancient Egypt or the Tawi, we prefer the Tawi as in Samai Tawi, Sema Tawi, the Tawi referring to the two, the two lands, right? And this is a perfect way of bringing out the Hebrew sense of Mitzrayim. Because remember the I am, the Yod Mim, usually, usually in Hebrew, right, denotes at least two, at least a doubling. Like when we spoke about um, Mesopotamia, right, over in the Iraq, Iran, Babel, ancient Babel, Babylon and Babel area, we have two rivers over there. And they refer to even in Hebrew as the Aram, Naharayim. Naharayim refers to the two rivers, the Tigris or the Tigris, the Tigris, Hiddekil, right, and the Euphrates, right? So right here we can see this idea, this sense Right? Of course, we're looking at a, a aerial, a aerial, a heaven view, so to speak, like what they call the God view. We're looking down on it, so to speak, right? But now, on the ground, you can see where this idea of this river, Hasobabe, right? Hasobabe, et call, right? Aret, right? Kush, all the land of Kush. So we see Kush right there, right? Now, also note this. The geographical distance from what is circled in the red, right, to where the artificial borders begin of what's called Ethiopia today is not that far. And then when we look at this modern map, look at how they did the borders of Chad, right, and Sudan, and Libya, and Egypt. Look, look how the Europeans, in the times of the Gentiles, the times of the nation states, look at how they drew these artificial borders. See, the artificial borders can confuse you, right? If we look at the rivers themselves, right, we can see that as these rivers flow from south to north, we can get the movement of people. People can move on the rivers, can travel on the rivers, you know, from south to north. So we see this progression from the south area, right? What I would refer to here as Kush is actually lower Kush. So this is something I'm introducing here from my scholarship and the scholarship of some of my fellows, my peers. This is Lower Kush. This is Lower Kush. Tell them that Yad and Ras Ayadana said so, right? This is Lower Kush. And that Upper Kush, right, connects directly with that region that we call Ethiopia. In the Ethiopian sense, that will be more on the Western side from an Ethiopia perspective. Right? But you can see how that blue now 
right? And the white Nile meets up in a place that's called today Khartoum, right? And it joins together and it becomes the Nile now, right? That comes down to what we call and what was known as Egypt, right? This is very amazing because this is the only river in the world that goes from south to north. So that means when we look at the Tigris and Euphrates River, which direction do they go in? Do they go from the south to the north or do they go from the north to the south? See, this is important when we start to talk about well, where, you know, the Garden of Eden may have been, so forth and so on. And what was the relationship of the Garden of Eden to these two particular rivers, right? To these two particular rivers. Let's get back right here to the text. So here we're looking at the word sabab, right? Sabab, right? Sabab. This is the word in ha sobeib, right? In the term that we brought out from the Hebrew, ha sobeib. Right, when talking about going, you know, around or King James says compasses, right? One said go around, the other one said go through. Remember, one of them said go through, right? Go through, right? And then we had which one up here? We had just to remind ourselves, we had the BBE that says this river goes round, right? Goes round all the land. This one right here says that it goes through. Right, the whole land. Down here, we have the ISV that said it winds through the entire land of Cush. Right? And then here, the KJV, you know, the 400 year Bible right here, it says that the same it is that compasseth. So here we're going to look at the word compasseth, the H5437, sabab. Here, the BDB definition says to turn, to turn around to go, to turn around or around or aside or back or toward, to go about or around, to go about, around. It doesn't always mean like a full circle, right? You know, it can mean that according to the context, but it can also mean from other areas in the Hebrew scripture where the same word is used, it doesn't mean just to make a circle, 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 right? It has these senses that are brought out in the BDB right here to surround. It can mean to encircle, but it also can mean to change direction, right? To change direction. The Gal of Sabah means to turn, to turn around, to be brought round, to change, right? And as you see that river as it goes, it seems to go round. It makes these kind of like semicircles. We can see that within the, the, the blue, I mean the white now, when it joins up the blue now, you can see the blue now makes that little circle coming around to Tana. And then you can see that as it keep, continues to go straight, you can see a definite difference when it reaches the approximate area of ancient Egypt. Notice right here, when it reaches the approximate area of ancient Egypt, it kind of straightens out. You notice that? It straightens out. Look at these wide turns. These wide turns there are rounds. This is the sabab sense of the Hebrew. This is definitely sabab sense. Look at the blue Nile right here. You can see where it turns around where Lake Tana is. That's the sabab sense, right? You can see even as it's coming further, you know, from, from, from what they call Lake Victoria today, you know, from Kenya and the Tanzania region, you can see where it's making these little circles. You can see as it gets to the South Sudan, it makes a circle and seems to like divide into kind of a two right there. But you can see this this sense of semicircle turning, and then when it comes up here, it becomes dramatically more straight. It doesn't do any of this sababbing, right, as it were. It doesn't do any of the sababbing. But let's get back to the word right here, all right? Just to touch on this right here, you know, to those who say, well, Ethiopia is not Ethiopia. Nonsense, you know what I mean? That's just total nonsense. Right, trying to change the reality, even though Ethiopia may not have been a name that was used right before there was the name Abyssinia in the West. And notice, even when Ethiopia was called Abyssinia, the native Ethiopians themselves still call themselves Ethiopian, the Ethiopian, Ethiopian. They still call themselves Ethiopian. 
So when you're reading literature from the Europeans, and even when you're reading literature, the Europeans were studying the Arabs, the Arabic literature from the Al-Habasha and everything. They were reading these terms and they were calling it Abyssinia. But when they got to Ethiopia themselves, they found that the so-called Abyssinians referred to themselves as Ethiopians. So you following what's going on here? The people are identifying themselves as this, and other people are saying, nah, 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 ah, 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 ah. No, you are this. That's what ones like Garfield's trying to do and saying that, well, if it wasn't named this, then it wouldn't be so important. But Garfield, you got to check out that they named it this. Even Azana named it this. Whatever you may think of his reason, so forth and so on, but this became the name of this, right? And Haile Selassie I even announced to them that stop calling it what you call it in the West, but now recognize that we have sovereignty to name ourselves. You know what I'm saying? Not just what they call you, but who you are. It's like, it's like a cognitive dissonance. Right? All these so-called pro-black, you know, scholars, right? These pro-black scholars are talking about how the white man called us all these names, called us nigger and negro and this and that and colored and all these other things. But, but we want to name ourselves or we really are this. We really are that. Right? Should we be allowed to name ourselves or should the white man, the so-called European, the Gentiles, be the one allowed to name us? So the Gentiles, other nations, were calling the Ethiopians Abyssinians at the very same time that we can find the Ethiopian literature. And that's one great thing about Ethiopia, having that writing system, that fidel and that literature, right, to express and articulate their own truth. And we're saying that real scholars, the real black scholars, will look into, oh, what the Ethiopians are saying of themselves and then do your scholarship on that instead of just taking, you know, Western Gentile scholars, you know, lock, stock and barrel. But notice right here, this is the secondary entry to march, to walk around, to go partly. You, you see this right? Oh, wait, hold up. See, this is bringing out the real Hebrew sense of it, right? Because not just about the letter of the law, so to speak, but the spirit of it. You know, some words can be said, it could be in patois. One's the ones who speak patois. One's the ones who speak certain, you know, um, kind of black African-American or Caribbean dialects. Sometimes we'll say certain things, right, in a certain way, and an outsider will think we mean this, but we have to tell them, no. You see, when we say this, when this is said, we all take this to mean this. You have an outside ear, right, and what you hear is not what we mean by that. This goes to this particular point right here. Sabab can mean to go partly around. You see what it says? Partly around. Or the sense of circling about. We can see that the white now, right, when it joins the blue now, right, and for a moment as it goes to the proximate region that's called Kush, how it circles around, how it goes partly around. To make a round, to make a circuit. So it both can mean to go partly around, or to circle about, and or to skirt. You see where it says it skirts? That sense of, you know, like in Hebrew, if you say someone's sabab around somebody, it doesn't mean that they made a full circle because that, that would be expressed a little bit different in the Hebrew, right? To give a Hebrew hearer the understanding, okay, that's what you mean, right? Oh, you meant just skirt it. You just skirted something. You know, like I just went around. You know, like I'm driving and this car was just stopped short and I had to go around the car, right? Don't people ever say that? You're driving down the road or you're driving down somewhere and the car stops short or the car stops and you have to go around that car. Did you make a circle around the car? Like, like circle, 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 circle the car? Or did you go around the car? See, so it's the context, right? Make a circuit, go about, go about to surround or encompass right now when the word is used in some of the different senses of the dick duke this is like the the grammar you know and according to the binyanim you know the construction whether it's past present whether it's passive whether it's intensive whether it's reflexive these are the different states of the hebrew right here we have a nephile sense to turn oneself so if I turn myself, it doesn't mean I made, made a complete circle, but I turned myself. I could have made like a half circle or part of a circle to close round, to turn around, right? Sometime in turning around, if somebody turns around, 
right? Is it a 360 that they make, right? Or is it a 180 that they make? So even making a 180 has that part or that sense of the sabab, round, go around, turn around, to be turned over to. Now in the PL sense, it can be to turn about or to change and transform. Right? So in the Hebrew, we just bring out the Hebrew sense of this. Because one's going to say, well, the Hebrew is Kush. Right? And then they rely on the translators or their favorite translation of the Bible and say, well, it's go around. And they are getting this idea of a circle, 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 circle. Right? And that's not even the, the, the context of the Hebrew word, of the original word. To turn about, to change, to transform. Now, let's note this too, that when the 1611 version of the, of the King James Version of the Bible was written or was translated from allegedly Hebrew and other ancient languages, they still did not know the source of the now. There's somebody named Sir James Bruce, right? Travels to Abyssinia and in search of like the source of the now. Look up somebody named Sir James Bruce. I think he was in the 1700s. He was... um. Mm, I think it was a Scottish, Scottish explorer, Freemason and everything, right? But that's not against him, just articulating what he was. And he was on a journey on behalf of Her Majesty, you know, in the British government, Britannia, to try to find what the source of the Nile. They already knew the Nile from the Egyptian, you know, explorations. And the British also took Egypt from Napoleon and, 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 and you know, from you know, all that history right there. But notice the PL sense. The PL sense of it is to turn about, to change and transform. Notice how the two rivers link up. Notice how one part of the river that goes to Lake Tana or Tana, how it turns about. It changes. The Poel sense. Now, these are different senses to encompass, to surround, to come about. So even the sense of ha so babe, right? Ha so babe. Right? To come about. Right? The Poel sense. To come about. Right? To assemble around, to march, to go about. Right? Notice what it says to enclose, to envelop. Remember when we were showing you the river right there? I think we showed you the river here. And you can see in the region. This is just taking this map here. There's some other interesting maps, but to make a point, we'll use this particular map for example. You can see how it goes around, how it seems to enclose. Remember that the majority of the settlements, right, that are found, even from ancient times, appear to be on the right-hand side or on the eastern side of the Nile, just like we have further down the Nile with the Kemet, you know, and this was the soil, you know, the earth, the silt, all of that nutrient-rich soil that was coming, right, from the highlands. That's what we call this right here, Lower Kush, right? And this is right here, this will be Upper Kush, right? So as we go further, further south, we have Upper Kush or Upper Kush, right? And here we have Lower Kush. See, they want to tell you right here that in ancient Egypt, there's Upper Egypt and Lower Egypt, right? That's how they like to say, Upper Egypt and Lower Egypt, right? But they don't want to tell you that there is Upper Kush and Lower Kush. What's in the circle right there is Lower Kush, but we can see that compassing, you can see that compassing of the river. Let's get through this right here because I think we're almost at an hour mark of this. Don't want to be too long. Thank you, brothers and sisters. About to seal this up. But here to enclose, to envelop. To envelop. It's like an envelope. Right? An envelope. Right? Are we talking about a full enclosure or a partial enclosure? Remember the word that we showed you up here where we're set up here to go partly around. Right? To go partly around. Let's take a screenshot of that. To go partly around. Right? Let's see if we can take a screenshot of that. There we go. To go partly around. Here we have the he fill sense. In the he fill sense of sabab, we have to turn, to cause to turn, to turn back. Notice, you see what it says to turn back? We can go back to this map, go back to this map, go back to this map, and we can see where it seems as though the river over here right turns back you see with the blue now it keeps going straight right it's, it's like it turns back right you see it goes around to lake tana in the territory that today is called ethiopia according to the times of the nation states and this is only going back to what 18 something 
18, the 18 something, like the Berlin Conference, the late 1800s, when they made these artificial borders and confused the heck, right, out of themselves and even nowadays out of the native people themselves. Native people themselves can't see the natural boundaries. The river was one of the natural boundaries. But now people are looking at these artificial borders of the nation states that's not even, is it 200 years old? I don't think it's even 200, it was the 1880 something with the Berlin Conference. It's not even 200 years old and causing great confusion to a bunch of pseudo academics. You know what I mean? But let's just keep it academic. You know, keep something ap academic is to keep something basic. So here it says to turn back, to reverse, to bring over, to turn over, to bring round, to cause, to go around, to surround, right? And you can see how the river does surround, right? Because um, on the other side, the water body on the other side of the river is the Red Sea, is the Etara Bahir, right? Or the Yam Suf, if we want to call it the Yam Suf, the Etara Bahir is the other large water body. Because see, these water bodies for ancient people on the ground were these natural boundaries, right? These natural boundaries. Now notice what it says right here. In Strong's definition, it's a primitive root, a very ancient root word, sabab, right? Sabab, mean to revolve, surround, or, and, or to border. To what? To border. All right, and we look at that map again, and we go back to the ancient testimony from Egypt and other places, since that's one of the few places we can kind of compare, well, what they said about this and how they described some things from an ancient time to help us get a kind of a context, right, to how to properly look at this Bible and the translations, using various applications, boom. So here we have to decide, well, what is the application being used here? It can be used in a literal sense as this description of the ground and the land and the rivers is seeking to bring across, or in other cases in a figurative sense. So look at some of the ways after the colon and the hyphen is some of the ways this word is the same word, sabab, is translated elsewhere throughout the Bible, right? And we didn't even get a survey of how many places it's been translated elsewhere, how many times this particular word appears. We can do that, and perhaps we should do that, right? But first, let's do this right here. Figuratively or literally, it can mean to bring, to cast, to fetch, to lead, to make, to walk, to whirl, to round about, to be about on every side, to apply, to avoid, to beset, to besiege, to bring again, to change. So you can see all these to circuit, to compass, to drive on, to environ, right? To round about, to remove, to return, right? To set, to sit, to, to turn, turn self, to turn about, to turn away, to turn back. And we showed you all of those applications even by just looking at this one, this one map reference. We're just using a basic map reference. Right? But that was that his his main point. His main point was that Ethiopia is not Ethiopia. We spent some time touching on the river part because it's in the same verse in Genesis 2 13. Right? So ones like Garfield Reed and others are trying to say, well, what is speaking about here of Ethiopia is not speaking of their Ethiopia. But notice once again on this map. Let's let, let's show something else on this map right here. Notice this map right here. Let's zoom in out like this. Right? You see the circle where Cush is. Right? You can see how the river kind of winds and bends and also circles about. Like you see, you can see a big circle about right here. It circles about. It, look, it turns back. It goes down right there and then it comes back. Like it, it, it go, it's going to the north, then it comes back a little bit to the south before it winds about and goes up and it's circling the land that you see here that is called by many scholars studying the archaeological remains of Kush, right? But notice this other part of the same river. Is this not the same river? This is the same river. You can see that this is the same river, right? This is still the same river body, the same water body right here. Right? And notice how it turns, it seems to go down right here and it turns back right here. And it's in the region of, you see where it says Ethiopia? Do you see where it says Ethiopia there? So it both encompasses, this river both encompasses what ones might call Kush 
from an archaeological um, study of the past and even presently what is known as Ethiopia. It circles back. So it both connects the old, right, the Hebrew Kush, as well as we could say what in modern times is being referred to as Ethiopia. But let's look at the word right here. It says the whole land of Ethiopia, right? As we already mentioned in the Hebrew Bibles, is Kush. It's Kush, right? Now, Kush here, Kush is very, very interesting because this, this term Kush is also applied to certain regions over in the east, right? In the east of Mesopotamia or the two rivers, Tigris and Euphrates, ancient Babylon. It's also applied to certain parts of India, this term Kush. So it would seem to be that whoever these Kushites or these Ethiopians were, that they moved about. Remember we showed you the map, right? The aerial view where there was no borders, right? There wasn't these artificial borders. Did you expect that if people were in the region of East Africa that they never explored, they never traveled, they never went anywhere? They didn't have to get a visa. They didn't have to get a passport. They didn't have to go through customs. They didn't have to go through TSA and all these things. They were free to move. So we are looking at our condition today and we're superimposing anachronistically on people in the past the same circumstances. Like if I'm in Jamaica, I'm going to have to get my paperwork right before I can come to America. Or if I'm in America, I'm going to have to get my paperwork, my visa, my passport, get all those things right before I can go to the UK or England, you know, or even go to Canada, you know, or even sometimes go to Mexico. Right? But notice, they have a border between Mexico and Texas, but the, the native people tell you, the indigenous people tell you, see, Garfield and others are trying to go against the indigenous people's testimony of themselves. What could be more ludicrous? I mean, even many of the real scholars, you know, they are somewhat hesitant to do that, right? Because you know what you're saying. You're saying that you as a foreigner know more about someone than their own scholars. And I can see if Ethiopia did not have scholars. Ethiopia has some amazing scholars, male and female, you know, men and women scholars. I'm not saying that I agree with all of their conclusions, but you know what? You have to respect their scholarship, right? So here we have BDB definition of Kush, and they're defining it as, quote, black, end quote. Don't know what that means, brothers and sisters. You know, and other things, they would just tell you what it is. But when it comes to black, they have to put this so-called doubt. They have to put these, these quotation marks as to imply some doubt about it because they want you to have a doubt about yourself. Our ancestors back in the 20s and 30s back then, who Garfield is trying to dismiss, who identified us as so-called Negro black people with Ethiopia, because in the dictionaries, the Webster's Dictionary at that time, that's how Ethiopia was defined, right? So was our scholars wrong then? Right? And someone like Garfield is right now that wants us to dismiss the fact that Ethiopia, whether from Azana, as he and other scholars say, or from the time of Haile Selassie, right, say, say it was called Ethiopia, is still a fact that it's named Ethiopia. And that's what we're dealing with today, right? We're dealing with that Ethiopia. But then, even if you want to say in ancient times it was Kush, and you try to say you have no relation with Ethiopia, we just prove the point right here. We just prove the point by what we showed here concerning the river, concerning the circled area that was called Kush. Notice that Kush is not on no map today, right? I mean, it is on some map. You will find a name Kush in some places. Yes, we know that. But I'm talking about in this region of East Africa. Kush is not on any official maps. Why? Kush is on scholarly speculations and maps of scholars trying to, you know, put together ancient and archaic history to try to better understand, you know, what was what then. But notice how this river is an amazing river. This river east of the river now, you know, and big up to the Ethiopians on that gird. You know, big up to y'all on that gird. Hopefully y'all can protect that from the haters. You know, like we're dealing with these haters over here. Hopefully you can deal with those haters over over there. We're trying to protect, you know, the the people 
right? Especially Rastafari, right? You know, the intellectual level of Rastafari, because sometimes we can be a little bit nostalgic. Sometimes we can be because it's a beautiful thing when we see something good that's happened for us in history. Some dismiss it, right? And they have been part of the problem, not just today, but they have been part of the problem yesterday because you had these same pseudo scholars trying to dismiss our black people identifying like Marcus Garvey. Look at Marcus Garvey. He was the John, the Ethiopian baptizer, right? And read what he was saying, right? He was saying we had to come off of all this nigger and this Negro shite, you know what I mean? And recognize, you know, a modern testimony of our great heritage as black people. And what was he talking about? Ethiopia. Right, Ethiopia, both specifically in the modern, you could say, empire. Well, it's no longer because of the godless creeping coup, the rebellion, but even in this modern nation state term, the modern nation state terminology, Ethiopia. Right, you see where it's both Ethiopia there, and you see the river. You see that river? You see the bottom of the screen where it says Ethiopia? You see the bottom of the screen where it says Ethiopia? Right now, notice how Sudan. Have you noticed right here, can you make out Sudan and Southern Sudan? Can you see where it says Sudan and Southern Sudan right there on the map? Right? Can you see where the borders of Ethiopia begin going up to where Eritrea is right there? Take a moment. You see how Sudan, see this is a modern map. Before there wasn't, if you look at map a map from the 1990s, right, or even early 2000s, or a map from the 1950s or, or the, or the, uh, 1800s, you would not find South Sudan. You wouldn't find South Sudan. This is a modern nation state, and you can see where they drew the artificial, you know, borders right there. But even with the borders of what you see as Sudan and South Sudan, notice how Sudan encompasses Ethiopia. Notice how Sudan encompasses Ethiopia, or in a very clear sense, it goes around. Ethiopia, just just the borders, even on the artificial map. And notice how the borders of the artificial map of Sudan and South Sudan encompassing the geographical area of the artificial bordered, you know, Ethiopia. All these are artificial borders. So we're not just talking about Ethiopia. All of these are artificial borders. The difference with Ethiopia is that Ethiopia, right, because of its particular peculiar position, was able to call its own borders for itself. At that particular time, Berlin Conference and the whole scramble for Africa was able to call its own borders, right? Because the Europeans knew, well, to deal with these people, right, was not like dealing with other peoples. And we say this is a part of that ancient Judeo-Christian culture, right? Garfield says, well, it was colonized by, you know, um, Greek or, you know, or Christianity. These are lies. These are lies. These are just modern intellectual you know, liberalism. It's like a lot of the liberalism that people learn in school that undermines, you know, longstanding values and morals, you know, of society and is leading, you know, to the implosion, you know, of society and culture and basically our way of life. The good aspects of this way of life, right, are being turned about by a lot of this pseudo scholarship, right, and liberalism. So liberalism even creeps into the academics. Right, because they could not defeat right this ancient Ethiopia even into the times of Haile Selassie. So what they now try to do is to defeat us who hold the legacy of that which was not defeated. So they're trying to do this through an intellectual cycle babble, right, and get us caught up on our emotion instead of letting them make their argument clearly. That's why I say to all my brothers and sisters, let ones like Garfield make his argument clearly, right. And then let's take down what that argument is, right? And then let's put in that work, right? Not to change his mind, right? We might not change these people's mind, right? But so that the babies, the children, right, will have accurate knowledge and information to dismiss all that rhetoric and all that pseudo scholarship, right? Because they're trying to dismiss what is and saying what is is not really what is. When we can study history and see how what is came to be what is. It's like saying, my saying, America is not really America. You know what I mean? And trying to dismiss that there's such a thing called the United States of America and there's such a thing called North America. 
right? Because I find some in some 10,000 BC, it was called something else. You know what I mean? That has no relative on reality. They're trying to take you out of the bounds and the bounds of reality. That's what they're trying to do, trying to take you out of reality. We're not speaking about spiritual things and these things. We know that these haters have hated on these things and slanderers and blasphemers have blasphemed on these things. You know what I mean? But right here, we can see how both the Kush connection or what they call Kush as well as the Ethiopia connection is clearly made because you can see how that river and those rivers surround, right, and go round and they wind round Ethiopia, what's Ethiopia, into the territory now called Sudan to where we get to what's called Kush. And then when we come further, we can see how the river straightens up. That's one of the most amazing things about the river. It's wind, it turns this way, it goes round about, right, with Lake Tana in the territory called Ethiopia. Then it goes further in the red circle and it kind of makes these arches. You see how it makes this kind of zigzag, you know, not even a zig, it's not really a zigzag, but it's a it's a circling. A real it's really a a half circle winding. But then when it comes to the approximate area of Egypt, you, you can see how it just turns straight. Right, more it's more straight. It doesn't have this kind of winding, right? And part of the reason is because of the of the geography of the land. We have mountains. We have a mountainous land, like the mountains of the moon. We have mountains, right, and ridges, mountains, and underground. We could say passageways of water, and we're just talking about today. So when we look at the biblical narrative. Right, even some three thousand to five thousand years ago, whether your 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 what is it what they call the geolo geologists all want to admit to it, but they know that changes have gone on. They try to date these changes to to, to millions of years, but we know that these same changes can happen in less time than that. That in other words, the land and certain things are not the same today. There are rivers that are no longer rivers today. There were rivers in ancient times. When I say ancient times, I'm saying anything more than 1,500 years ago. So I use the term ancient. I'm saying 1,500. I'm using the academic terminology, right, or the academic qualification of ancient being anything 1,500 or more years ago. is It's properly called ancient, right? And Ethiopian World Federation Incorporated, we're supposed to be disseminating, right, ancient Ethiopian, you know, Ancient Ethiopian knowledge, ancient Ethiopian history. This is what we are to disseminate, right? So that means we're pointing to a period of time, right? 1,500 years. But even within the past 1,500 years, a lot of things, a lot of things have changed, right? So here, let's continue to disseminate like the ancient Ethiopian culture. Here, we're here to promote love and goodwill. Right? We're here to promote love and goodwill among Ethiopians at home and abroad and thereby to maintain the integrity and sovereignty of Ethiopia. We're here to disseminate the ancient Ethiopian culture right? among its members to correct abuses. Right? And ones like Garfield Reed and so many others, you know, he's just like the black face of a lot of the abuse that has gone on in other faces. Right? He becomes the black face of this right here. But interesting, Cush equals black. Right? They say a Benjamite mentioned only in the title of Psalm 7 is a noun proper masculine name. Here, secondary entry says the son of Ham or Kam, Kam, Ham, the son, the grandson of Noch or Noah, and the progenitor of the southernmost peoples located in Africa. Pause. Pause. The progenitor of who, according to this entry, the secondary entry under the age 35, 68 for Cush, it says that, 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 that the son of Ham, right, the grandson of Noah called Cush, is the progenitor of the southernmost peoples located in Africa. So that means, according to this, we would have a, right, uh, a upper and a lower context to that as well. Right? In other words, or a north and the south, that those in the southernmost region. And notice we can follow the Nile. Notice that river there. You see that river there. It both connects with the biblical narrative concerning the dispersion of peoples in latter day territory. So when we look at what Moses wrote in his first book, 
he is using the territorial relation that he was familiar with, right, to express, right, the ancient times that he was not, right, a witness to, but based on either, it's either either what he learned from his wisdom in ancient Egypt and his travels, so forth and so on, according to the scripture, according to the Torah, according to the Bible, or this was revealed to him, you know, by Hashem, by Yahweh Loheno, or it was revealed to him by the Malaak Panav, the Malak Panay, or by the angel of the presence, according to the book of Jubilees, right? It's either, this is what he has studied, being learned in all the wisdom of the Egypts, right? And, or what Yah had revealed to him, or what was revealed to him by the angel of the face, or the angel of the presence, that's mentioned in Kufali, the Metzhaf Kufali, called, you know, the Ethiopic Book of Jubilees. But here, this is linking Kush to the people in the South, even in South Africa. The peoples descendant from Kush, right? The peoples who are descended from Kush, noun proper masculine. The land occupied by Kush, by the descendants of Kush, located around the southern parts of the Nile. Notice what it says, the southern parts of the Nile River is Ethiopia. You know that right there? The southern parts of the Nile River, right? But then based on the map here, remember the artificial borders. See, this is where we have to get to some of these maps here. So we've been showing this for a moment right here. But we want to show you one other map right here. Let's see if we can find this other map right here. Right? Let's see if we can find this other map right here. We might have to go off, off out, out of this right here for a moment. And let's look up maps. Right? We had did this before. We look up maps. Okay, here and looking up our maps. Yeah, there, there goes right there. Notice right here on this map, I think this is like 1700s or so, right? You notice where Ethiopia is and the territory that is called Abyssinia. You see over here, this is not a really clear, clear one. We're going to have to find another one, a clear one. This is not a clear one. The clear one, we can zoom in and you can see the details. But over here in the yellowish, you see where it says Abyssinia. Right, that's Abyssinia over there. Right, but notice where that territory is and how that territory is right there bordered with Nubia. Right, and to think that people did not move up and down the Nile and from east to west is to deceive yourself. Right, peoples there were peoples were migratory people. Right, there was nobody to stop them at some artificial border and ask them, you know, for their passport, and ask them for their visa, their IDs. For example, to help to further prove this particular point, yeah, this is 1858. I said 1700, 1858. This is 1858 pre-colonial colonial Africa, right? So in a pre-colonial Africa, look where the Sudan was. Look where the Sudan was in that pinkish color right there. You see where the Sudan was? So notice how the Europeans decided to, to, to move names all around. Or he did not clearly know what it says, 1858. See how late a date is 1858. And we find a map like this, right? 1858, such late a date, right? And they have Ethiopia over here, right? In that particular region, right? And then they say Abyssinia over here. Now remember, this is not the, the 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 natives, the indigenous people of the continent, articulating or identifying it, but it is Western, Gentile, European, and based on certain Arabic and Islamic writings, you know, and data trying to locate who's who. All right? Let's go over here trying to locate who's who. I think I had another map. Let me see if I have a better map of that. But but you all seen this before right here. Right? You've seen this before right here. Now, many ones would dismiss this. Notice who didn't dismiss it? The scholars didn't dismiss this. We only see this now because we have social media. If you can find it and take a scan of it, you can circulate it. And before they can get their boots on, you know, whatever you put out there can go around the world. Right? Like, share, you know, like, share, like and share this video as well, brothers and sisters. You know, ones and ones who say Ethiopia is not Ethiopia. Right? Well, notice right over here, they call this part Abyssinia. But I would have you note who is naming what. 
we already went into why the Europeans and even the Arabs, well, the, from the Arabs or the Islamics and the Arabs, the Europeans started to borrow a lot of the knowledge that the Islamics and the Arabs came out with, like the Moors and the others back then, right? They started to borrow a lot of it, like algebra. We say algebra and algebra actually come from an Arabic terminology. We have Al-Habasha. Al-Habasha in the latter day, this is because like the Ottoman, the Ottoman Turks, you know, the time of the Ottoman Turks, right? So they were comparing their knowledge with what the Arabs, the Ottoman Turks, the Islamics and others were saying. And this is how they put things together. Of course, things are, I can't really say are clearer today because who would have guessed that we have lower Ethiopia over there. We've shown this years ago, but we're so happy that others have picked up on this mm -hmm. and given their kind of interpretation or points of view to the same data. So it's like a peer review. I give thanks to the other scholars and fellow brothers and sisters out there that have put these things together, you know, and given more peer review. Notice where it says Negro land, right? And then you see where it says lower Ethiopia, right? And then over here it says upper Ethiopia. Now, are they referring to Kush? What are they referring to? This is a did you know? Did you know this ancient map of Africa shows the vast area, right, formerly known as Ethiopia, as opposed to the Eastern African country called Ethiopia today? Mm. Now, if this was his perspective or his point of view, right, we would gladly... Right, we would gladly accept that right there because this is very clear evidence as this particular meme from Mr. Imhotep. Big up. Give thanks, Mr. Imhotep. Modern Ethiopia was known. See, I like his wording. Was known. It was known as Abyssinia, a more fuller context of this. It was known outside. Right? It was known outside of uh, by foreigners, and it was foreigners, the Europeans and the Ottoman Turks and the Arabic Islamics, they called it Abyssinia or Al-Habasha, right? And ancient Ethiopia was the rest, right, of black Africa. Boom, gotcha. Now, this now confirms exactly what even in Greek Greco-Roman times was known. So when the Greco-Romans referred to Ethiopia, they were basically speaking about black Africa, right? They were basically speaking about black Africa. That's why it's significant, right, that his imperial majesty, the conquering line of the tribe of Judah, Kedemari Hala Selassie, would have to restate and re-emphasize that the name of this country is Ethiopia and not Abyssinia. Right. And that's a big point right there and not Abyssinia. So people will say, well, the Ethiopians will tell Ethiopians that, oh, you don't know who you are. You really are Abyssinians. And it seems like because of lack of education, some Ethiopians, you know, Habashas are even believing that. Right. Because this knowledge is still knowledge that they did not have because they had other struggles against the Mohammedans. They had other struggles, you know, to keep their culture and heritage alive. You have to recognize that Ethiopia has been under fight and under battle. Those peoples in that particular East African region by the Ottoman Turks and the Islamics, you know, by blackface Islamics. You know what I mean? By by pseudo Western Cap Roman Catholic Christians. You know what I mean? By sometimes even other Black Africans who had had their differences too. You know what I'm saying? So it's these people have been holding something that is very important, right? In our knowledge of ourself beyond what the Eurocentric paradigm is. And it's unfortunate nowadays after their rebellion against Haile Selassie that although they are advancing in, you could say, modernism and technology and everything, that sadly it seems like they're forsaking their heritage. They've accepted like the whitewash icons of the Madonna and Child and of our Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMoshiach. It's sad that these things have happened, especially post my right, destruction of the monarchy. Right. And post rebellion against Haile Selassie, you know, we see these things going on. Right. And this is where I, like many of my related and fellow Israelite and Hebrew brothers say, ye Ethiopians also 
quoting Zephaniah 2 and 12, shall be slain by my sword. And that's the word of God. Right? They've fallen off on that. So it's not that we don't have our critique. Right? But it's a critique in love and for the well-being of our people. It's not some confusion to say that, well, Ethiopia is not Ethiopia. Right? You know? If you want to say Ethiopia is not Ethiopia, the only way that statement is even relatively historically, factually, with receipts and evidence true is when you point to something like this map or even some of the other maps. There's one other map I want to share with you. Well, there's a few other maps I want to share, but already we've gone a little beyond, you know, our intended, our intended time. But we have this one right here. Have you ever seen this one here? This matches that other map. That one that was 1858 pre-colonial Africa. Mm. Let me say this again. Pre-colonial Africa map. Before Africa got divided. You see where they have Nubia over here? Look where they have nu Nubia over here. Right? I got to get a clearer map of this so I can make out some of the details right here. But this is just a, kind of a placeholder for right now. You see where they have Abyssinia? You see this region that they call Abyssinia, this is the, the culture that, that links itself with that Solomon um, and Sheba and that Judeo, that, that, that Jew, black Jewish Christian, ancient Christian culture. That's what the Abyssinia kind of represents. But notice right there, you see where it has a series of, of structures like mountains. Right, you see where it has the mountains, where mountains, as we mentioned, were more natural divisions. So even this map, on some level, does bring that out in some way. So you see the red borders around where Abyssinia is, and you see where that lake is. That's that Lake Tana. Mm -hmm. You see, that's that Lake Tana right there. Right, it doesn't really bring out the now very well. Because you have to remember that this is like back in the eight. This might be even earlier than the eighteen hundreds. Which which date on this map? Pray pray you on that. Just pray the eye on that. It's probably somewhere around here, you know. But some of these maps labeling the continent as Ethiopia in part or in whole might go back to even sixteen. I think I saw a sixteen hundred a map from the sixteen hundreds. So this was well known, not just in Europe. Look where the Ethiopic Ocean. Ones want to be dismissive of that. Look over here where it says Ethiopia Superior. See, it's pointing to what? The South area, right? Now this here matches, right? Ones might challenge, right, the accuracy of this. But I challenge ones by not even recognizing the accuracy of this. You know, located around the southern parts of the Nile, the southern parts of the Nile. So when we start to trace how far the river goes south, we showed you, I think, in Tanzania, right, even a little bit further south. And we're looking at the, the, the Nile as is today. Like I said, Arabia, Arabia, again, Arabia even had rivers and water at one time. Right within the past three to five thousand years, right? Arabia, we suspect, based on our research, was where that this garden eastward in Eden, Eden included Afarabia, 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 or Africa Arabia. Some say Africa Arabia. I say Afarabia or Africa Arabia. Africa and Arabia. See, they try to cut off Arabia from Africa because of what occurred with the Suez Canal. Before that, the continent was even connected there, but underneath there's the tectonic connection as well between these land masses. And besides even all of that under the ground, the people themselves move back and forth. So people will say, was Queen of Sheba, was she Yemenese or was she Ethiopian? That's a modern way to ask a pseudo question. Right? Because in ancient times, they didn't place artificial border divisions. You see, what the Europeans did in the late 1800s coming to the 1900s has really affected our view in an anachronistic way of ancient history. So we're looking at what is today right, and trying to superimpose on the past. And this is why it doesn't make a lot of sense to many ones like, like Garfield and even others. Right? Now here they say it's probably a foreign origin. Don't want to even get into that because Kush is a foreign origin. Perhaps it's saying the Ethiopic, 
right? The gutters, right? Right? Because the gutters, right? Perhaps this is what they, they, they're speaking of, right? And gutters and the knowledge of gutters among the Europeans was very important even in making these concordances. Jesenius' lexicon kind of proves that as well, right? Here it says Strong's definition. They say probably of foreign origin. Because they cannot find with their knowledge of present biblical Hebrew any root word, right, for that. And here's where we must point to the Gutters, the Ethiopic, the Omotic, and even certain of the Cushitic languages, like even the Oromo and the Omotic, other languages as well, right, for origins, right? Cush or Ethiopia, the name of a son of Ham of Kam and of his territory. Also an Israelite, Cush, Cush, Ethiopia. Now, ones were saying, well, it doesn't mean Ethiopia in the blue letter. I really would like to check that out right there. I didn't see him present that when I was on his live. You know, if ones have that, you can share that one right there. Rastafari Jews at gmail.com. That's Rastafari Jews at gmail.com. So right here, 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 Ethiopia not being Ethiopia. That really bears no relevancy, no relation to the truth. And the only context is by saying that all of Africa, right, was named on the maps Ethiopia and the Atlantic Ocean, as you can see right here, was not named the Atlantic Ocean, but it was rather named the Ethiopic Ocean. In that context, modern day Ethiopia is a remnant and you have to understand why Ethiopia maintained that name Ethiopia. When we show you a map like this, you have to understand why that particular region that was not colonized, why zealously maintained the name of Ethiopia. And ones who are trying to say that Ethiopia is not Ethiopia, to dismiss Ethiopia's claims, what they are trying to do to Ethiopia. You know, it's a psyops war. It's like a COINTEL, it's a counterintelligence war. Not like the COINTEL plan then, but even something more per pernicious, right? We must say, even something more per uh, pernicious today, right? And whether the individuals like Garfield and others know what they're doing or not, you know, is besides the point. So notice over here, notice over here, notice this, this square here. Why do you think this square over here includes this? We will find the Garden right, of Eden <laughs> within the area of this square. Mm. Again, we will find the ancient, the approximate, I have to say forcefully the approximate area in this particular area. But notice how it goes out to the Babel area. Right, the Babylon area. Now here we have the Nile Valley. Once again, you can see this winding, right? This winding and circling. That's the area where, where Cush was right there. You see cartoon, right? Right there. You can see where we have the blue Nile. You see where the blue Nile and Lake Tana is right over there. Now we go to southern, right? Southern uh, South Sudan, right? Now remember these borders, the white, the white borders. This is the Martin borders since the late 1800s, right? And you can see how it goes on down to Lake Victoria. But notice where we have Burundi, right? It seems as though they're pointing to some river right there, right? Does it continue, right? Was there even a southernmost tributary, right? But you can clearly see this relation to it, right? Now... There's some other related maps who's going to go into, you know, looking at, look at this. This is the Empire of Kush, right? And here they push those, the, the orange um, borders uh, as far south as some of their um, um, research and, and some scholarship points to. And we really like this right here because this does seem to paint a clearer, accurate picture when we look at Kush. Right. Notice you see over here, you see over here, you see that little, that's a little lake there. That's the Blue Nile. Notice how the Blue Nile is right there and therefore what's called ancient Kush, 
right? The Empire of Kush is a hop, skip, and a jump from what we call Ethiopia today. And this territory that you see at the border of where Kush is and where they have Punt is under Egyptian influence, this is the region that we have called Abyssinia, right? This is the region where Abyssinia comes in. And notice, this is like border. It's almost like saying that, you know, I never went to Queens. I'm in Brooklyn, right? Kings County, the County of Kings, right? That's what Brooklyn is called, right? Uh, County of Kings. And I never went to Queens. But Queens is, Queens is, is, is connected. It's on the same landmass. We've gone there enough time, many times. You see what I'm saying? It's like saying that the people in Kush, at the Kushites, after the empire of Kush my, fell, they never went and moved further south. And by moving further south, when we look at the topography of the land, because others are looking over here in Mesopotamia, my, that's what the argument Garfield and others are trying to make. They're trying to make all these little lines right here, my, a bunch of different rivers. But note that Mesopotamia, right, or the Tigris and Euphrates, they flow from north to south. When we go over here to the Nahar or the Nile, it flows from south to north. You see, that, that makes a big difference when we really are trying to ascertain the approximate area, right, of the Garden of Eden or the Four Rivers and so forth and so on. Right now, there's a few other maps I want to show. This is a little busy map here, but as far as bringing out the water, you can see the water source, right? Lake Tana. You see where Lake Tana, you see where it has the Baha el Jebel, right? Baha is, is a river, it has a Baha el um, Ghazi, right? The Baha el Arab, right? Over there, you have Lake Tana. Now, Baha. It, you know, it kind of refers to certain types of rivers and water bodies. You know, now you see where the source of the Nile, you see down here where it says, let's zoom in right here. You see where it says the source of the Nile. So the Nile flows, you can see there's a lake, there's Lake Victoria, Victoria, what they call Victoria Falls today. My, there's a Merchantson Falls. There was another level of falls. You can see how the land, as the Bible says, it was divided by what? The rivers. And you see right there, we have Ethiopia. But notice the region that's called Ethiopia, my, and over here and then over in the lighter area is a mountainous area. You can see how they try to show some of the mountains. So what happened with the fall of Kush and the world changes that were going on at some periods of time is that populations that had moved south, right, began to return and move north and set up kingdoms. And it was a, conti uh, a continuation of the same peoples. So when we talk about the Kushite peoples vis-a-vis -vis the Ethiopian peoples, both of those are true, with the exception of Kush as one nomenclature and Ethiopia right as another as another nomenclature now let's go over here i'm going to seal this up brothers and sisters but just wanted to touch on this okay here as far as to the garden right as far as to where was the garden it's clear that in mesopotamia there are two rivers mm -hmm. there are two rivers they try to make four rivers there's some streams that come off of the rivers but there's basically two rivers right and in east africa we have one main river that's called the nile but is we have many different parts of it now we also have to notice there's the rift valley there is different geological and topographical and you know changes that have gone on over even the past three to five thousand years not mentioning more thousands of years, all depends on where Moshe, you know, was getting, we can say, his information from. But his information, according to the context he was bringing out, was right and accurate. The mystery today is to say, well, after even the biblical flood, right, is it possible to find the garden or the garden of Eden? Have not certain river valleys that exist, uh, rivers, river systems that exist in the ancient times, could they not have been cut off? Right? Could they not have been cut off? Right? 
the whole land of Havila, right? That goes around the whole. This is one proposal right here because even the Jordan River, it has been observed, like the way they call it in the state of Israel area, you know, has been losing water pressure. You hear everyone talk about how water, you know, there's going to be wars over water in time to come. That means that <clears throat> these rivers, right, these rivers that had existed, like we look over here with the Nile River, were actually even more robust in the past. And no doubt there were connections, right, that are not so visible today because of a lot of the climate changes and other earth changes that had gone on. Here they say the ancient territory of Kush, the ancient territory of Kush, and it's known, even the ancient Egyptians testified to it, that their ancestors, as with the Kush being also of their ancestors, came from the south, Why right? These ancestors came from the south, right? We would say from the east and to the south. This is also here speculating right here some connections from some geological and archaeological finds and remains and different things. You know, they have this ground penetrating radar. That was one of the main things that we were saying in the chat concerning ground penetrating radar. Ground pen. I had a few um, few pictures and a couple of articles. I got to find these articles there in the archive. You know, got to sort it and find those articles because very interesting. Because it's from those ground penetrating radars that show that there were likely areas where rivers and waters flowed in more distant and more ancient times, right? That we don't see today. Right. And without the ground penetrating radar, right, the top, the superficial, the surface of things have changed with a few exceptions. We still have the Nile River in East Africa and there is still, you know, Tigris and Euphrates, although it is nowhere compared right, to what the Bible or the ancient testimony and the ancient, you know, the ancient record, you know, what the ancient record testifies to. Right now on Kush, you know, I was about to say this right here. Let's see if we can get to this right here. Okay, Ethiopia being Ethiopia. This is also another map too. You see, you see where you have that Lake Tana, the heartland of Kush, and you can see Lake Tana. How far would it take one from Mero, Meroway? Right, this is a very close place. I'm gonna actually look up and find from Mero to ask them how many miles, right? How many miles is it? Because ones are thinking that, well, the people who were in the Kush heartland, they never moved from there. They never traveled. And that their ancestors never came from further south. The ancient Egyptians even pointed out that their ancestors came from the south, right? This is another map here, right? This is also a very interesting map here as well. Because here you can see the close proximity, right, to Mardin, Ethiopia, right, with the Napata and with Meroe and Mero, right? So then to distance these places, and then you can see up here in the north, Jerusalem is not far. People traveled, right? And you can see the Tigris and Euphrates rivers, right? The Tigris and Euphrates, they try to tell you, oh, there's these other four, two other rivers and blah, blah, blah. No, no such thing right there, you know? What it's talking about is this particular region, right, of land. Here you can see, this was the map we was going to show before, Kush, right? You see where they say Kush. You see how Kush right there, the heartland is right where those two rivers meet. And this would make a very logical thing for ancient peoples to do. As water was so important to survival, to life, to and especially to any sort of kingdom, empire, or civilization, or community, you needed to have water. But notice where the Blue Nile is. You see where the Blue Nile is? That on the map today is what they would call the region of Ethiopia. That's a hop, skip, and a jump. Meroe was a hop, skip, and a jump from Aksum, and Ethiopia, modern Ethiopia region, and the ancient Kush 
ancient Kush um, heartland and the Kush civilization that is pointed out in ancient Egypt and ancient writings is very close, is very contiguous, and we're basically speaking about similar and the same peoples, right? Others will look at these maps here, right? But we still are looking at the relatively same area, the same region, right? They try to put the Ethiopians way down there, right? But remember that Ethiopians is Kush. You see what I'm saying? So let's put Ethiopia on the side for a moment and let's take what the Bible is saying, Kush. And let's take what we have read, you know, from the, um, I wouldn't call it really a concordance, but it was a kind of a concordance, yeah, point of reference to the Kushites and the, and the Kush being the progenitor of the southernmost people of Africa. And what we find on the maps, right, from the 16 all the way to the 1800s of parts of Africa being called Kush, Upper Kush, Lower Kush, Kush, in, uh, I mean, Upper Ethiopia, Lower Ethiopia, Ethiopia Inferior, Ethiopia Superior. You, you, you've seen that. If you haven't, then go back to those maps right there. And then Sheba. Ones are trying to make an artificial divide, right? Just because there was that river, uh, that, was, uh, uh, that was a little slip right there, Right, far eye slip to far eye, right? Or step. That's a step because this this notice how the Red Sea, you see how the Red Sea bends right there? It's almost like you could put the Red Sea together. Like the Red Sea possibly, right, in some ancient most times could have been some sort of a river, right? That might have surrounded where this Garden of Eden, right, was said to be. Right? Then we look at this right here. You can see how this river goes all the way south, Merrowway. So they stop this here. This is a zoom in on that part. You see how it compasses? You see how the river compasses? You see how it curves? You see that right there? Right? So that's lower lower Kush. Right? Here is Kush, right? Ethiopia and Kush, roughly from the 1600 to the 1100 BCE. Notice this right here. You see where it's talking about the kingdom. Let's bring this up. The kingdom, right? The new kingdom, right? Now, this is good because it gives you some sense of miles. Based on what it says right there, it was about 150, no more than 300 miles. From Merroway, it'll be about 100 to 150 plus miles, and you'll reach the area that's now called Ethiopia. What kind of nonsense are they trying to play? It's like saying that New York and D.C. has no connection. It's like saying that D.C. and Atlanta have no connection. It's like saying that Atlanta, Georgia, and Florida have no connection. You know what I mean? They might be separate states, right? But there's that relation. Like people don't go from here to there. And sometimes like a lot of people went from the from down south, came up to the northern states. A lot of our people, my black people, black Amer Afro American people, and also a lot of people up in the north, right? Started to make a migration. I've been making migrations back down to Atlanta and to the southern states. Right? This is the same analogy of what people did also in East Africa concerning the place that's called Kush in the more ancient times and what we call Ethiopia, right? what we call Ethiopia today. Let's look at this right here. You can see where on this particular map of where Kush and Meroe was, we can see how close, how very close the connection. And this is a good map right here because it shows you the mountains. Right? Mountains... Not all people can deal with mountains. You can see right here where it has location of pyramids, right? Location of pyramids. Then the Nile River, the cataracts of the Nile River. We can see the trade routes. Look how the trade routes were to and fro, right? And then they tell us, well, this is the general Kushite region, right? As reported in certain ancient maps. Now here they make the general Kushite region um, larger than Upper and Lower Egypt, which is very, very interesting. Larger than Upper and Lower Egypt, right? And remember we said that the majority of um, habitations and dwelling would be on the right-hand side, would be on the eastern side. Notice that when you go down here like to Kerma, you see how the river bends? That there was more land because how the river bended 
out, it gave them more land to dwell on the on the eastern side than even by Thebes. You see, with Thebes and Memphis, they had less land on the eastern side, right? Because the western side was the desert. That's why over here they have a whole bunch of palm trees, all these oases, right? That means if there's an oasis there, the rest of it is desert, right? So we see these trade routes going to and fro, right? But also in the sea. And then we can also see these trade routes right here. Notice this right here from Memphis, right? They would go through the Sinai, what they call the Sinai Peninsula, and they would go down Arabia. Look at that trade route right there. Go down Arabia, right, to Aden. There's the Aden I was looking for. Aden, that's Eden. Aden, Aden. And this is a sign that the Aden, the Eden, most likely was Arabia because Arabia used to have rivers, and Arabia became very dry. And this also can maybe bring out what's written in the scripture about the cherubims turning away to the garden. And it's almost like it's not there, right? At least on this, you know, on this, in this world, so to speak. You know, I'm not going to get into all the spiritual stuff. This is just a basic looking at the evidence, looking at the maps and making sense of what we are looking at. Right, so the ancient Kush, the ancient Nubian civilization. This is another map right here. Right, see where the red ends. There's a little bit of green. You get right there to the border. What is that? They said the scale right there. That's 500 um, kilometers. Well, what we see right there appears to be between 50 to 100 kilometers before you get to the border of what they would call today Ethiopia. Right. So don't even bemuse yourself that the people, the Kushites just stayed there and didn't go anywhere. People would move around because there was nothing to inhibit, right? There was nothing to inhibit their particular movement. So here it says Ethiopian tribes. What do they mean by Ethiopian tribes? That's a question I have. I just want to put that there, right? Or do they mean this Kush? I think it's this Kush that got them so confused, right? I think they, they're on this Kush. Right? Are you talking about this Kush? Right? Are we talking about kosher Kush? Right? The kosher Kush. Yes? Kush. Kasher. Right? Kosher Kush. Kosher Kush. Right? A critical Kush. Right? Master Kush. Right? Hindu Kush. Hindus Kush. Uh-oh. Right? Lemon Kush. Right? Uh, what is it? Um, um, Taho. Tao. Taho. Taho. I... I you know, I know how to pronounce some things right there, but the OG Kush. Let's just call it the OG Kush. Marijuana and the history of the OG Kush, right? Maybe you have to go to Professor Debaco. Maybe that's what you're talking about, right? Holy Grail Kush. Look at the Holy Grail Kush, right? I think that they caught up on this Kush. They really like Kush, right? Right? Kosher Kush. This is, this is Rastafari. Jews, Yehudi right here, Kush. And so Ethiopia is Ethiopia is Ethiopia, right? And Ethiopia is a testimony, right? What Ethiopia represents is a testimony to the ancient black African greatness. Why did they seek to maintain that name that the other areas of the continent was known as and even known to the ancient Greeks? You know, as Ethiopia. Why do they seek to maintain that name? Ones need to understand the significance of them seeking to maintain that name. So Kush, Ethiopia, the big question mark of who, what, where is Kush? Here are these some very interesting things. I have to bring out some translations right there. The Tobia Kush. Anyway, we're going to seal this up right here. Ethiopia is Ethiopia. Right? And Ethiopia testifies and represents a testimony right, to an ancient greatness. Right? Because in Ethiopia, you have many kinds of black African peoples, ethnicities, that are linked. Very interestingly enough, in Ethiopia, it's almost like America on a level of where it has different populations from different parts of the world. Well, in Ethiopia, you have different populations of black people right, from Africa, right, and from ancient Arabia and Israel, black peoples all within this region. 
it's a great heritage and it's important for us to get to know it for ourselves and to respect our own scholarship as well. Salam tut and astalin, you know, the Ethiopian Shalom Chabarim Shalom. This is Ras Yadin. This is Iadonis, Ras Iadonis Tafari. We approve of this message.